Hello there, hope you have enjoyed the video so far and here is how my crossbow works. Now the main premise of my crossbow which makes it work is that it's not really a crossbow actually. I call it a crossbow but in actual fact it's really just a glorified slingshot. Now the difference between a crossbow and a slingshot or any bow for that matter is that the energy from a bow comes from the bending of the wood which is the bow itself while the string that holds the two or when the string that contacts the, project, the projectile is actually not elastic. Now, a slingshot is where the elasticity comes from the string. Now, if you can see from my crossbow here, it's actually the parts that move are actually the string. So, what I, what I would call the bow, which are these two wing-like pieces over here, they don't really bend or anything, they're quite rigid in fact, but all the energy comes from the string. Now, the string is actually a piece of elastic much like this. Uh, this is the raw material, if you will. It's just a long piece of elastic string. And this is stretched over the bow or these wings. Now, pardon me for using the word bow so much, even though it's not a real crossbow, but you get the point. So, as you can see, all the energy comes from the string. So, that is the main driving mechanism for the projectile. Now I'm sure you're wondering what's the point of having these wing-shaped contraptions if it's really just a slingshot. And the reason is because of the concept that the longer the, the piece of elastic, the more it can be stretched and therefore the further back it can be stretched and therefore more energy can be stored in that elastic band. Now the purpose of these really is just to add more area for it to, well, to, to, for a longer piece of elastic to be stretched. So as you can see, the elastic band is actually, is actually anchored here in this green part here. So that's sort of like a, it's sort of a, how do you say, it's where the elastic band ends and where it's tied. And it actually goes in a, almost like the shape of a number four on each side before ending on the other side where there's another green piece. So what this allows is for the, lung, for the piece of uh, elastic band to be longer. For me to be able to be used for, for sorry for me to be able to use a longer piece of elastic, and therefore this can be pulled back quite a lot more than if it were anchored at the endpoints here, or if it were anchored at the body itself. And here you can see the ammunition that I'm using. So it's actually just a piece of paper uh, rolled up into a tube like that using a chopstick. So it's actually hollow in the center, if you can see, and. Um, it's held together with tape. Now this is a bad example, this long piece. Uh, I actually rejected it, that's why I'm not using it. But this is what it starts out as and after taking out the chopstick, I actually cut it into uh, about inch long pieces like this. Now this being made of drawing block, which I think is about 100, 120 GSM uh, grams per square meter, is that it is it's very dense. So it's quite hard and there's not much compressive uh, it's not able to be compressed in this direction. So if I compress it in this direction, it is it will compress, but it's still quite hard. And being this hard, and while being made of paper, now you bear in mind it's made of paper, um, I think it would definitely kill any kind of lizard or cockroach if you shot at it. Now the reason I use paper instead of Lego, which is much harder, and I've seen many other crossbows on YouTube, um, which are which shoot Lego uh, Lego pieces, is that Paper is dispensable, it's expendable, but Lego is expensive. So if this flew out the window and I live in a high rise and um, if this flew out the window, I might never see it again. So if this were a Lego piece, it would definitely hurt my pocket much more. Now, of course, the most important part of any kind of gun or weapon or thing that shoot or, or machine that shoots something is the trigger mechanism. And my trigger mechanism is not much different from that of a pistol or a rifle in that it's operated by your index finger. And um, well, this is different from, like, say, the M16, where the M16 has a trigger that actually is pivoted, so it moves something like that, with a pivot somewhere up here. But mine is a mine is a trigger that moves back and forth, which means that there's a sliding motion. And what this translates to, and uh, I've taken off the top part of the crossbow so you can see what goes on inside, is actually um, the motion of this stopper over here. Now, this is what prevents the bullet from coming out. Um, under the pressure or the, the tension of the string. So when I pull the trigger, the stopper actually moves down and gives way for the bullet to go out, uh, to, to, to exit the barrel. Now I'm not, I can't actually take apart the machine right now to show you how, what the exact mechanism is, but 
just to sum it up, it's actually just the trigger actually moves a slide a piece of sliding thing, a, a, a sliding assembly inside, which has a rod that prevents the stopper from moving down. So while the trigger is not pressed, the rod prevents is in a position with, that uh, stops the stopper, if you will. So once I pull the trigger, the rod moves out of the way and the trigger can move down. Now this is a matter of allowing the trigger, uh, sorry, allowing the stopper to move down rather than pulling the stopper down. So if I were to invert the machine, invert the crossbow, you will see that pulling the trigger doesn't do anything. So it's not actually pulling the trigger, uh, pulling the stopper down, it's actually just allowing it to go down. Now, what the, 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 the mechanism that keeps the trigger spring-loaded is actually not located inside the machine, but located outside of the machine, outside of the crossbow. And it's this uh, white wheel and a red thing over here. So this red piece is actually connected to the whole trigger assembly inside. And this allows me to put this wheel here. And this wheel is actually what connects to, uh, it's actually the pulley for this elastic band over here, which is tethered in the front, as you can see. So this allows me to change the elastic band if something goes wrong or to adjust the tension. So as you can see, I can remove the wheel and there are a few holes for me to put them in. I prefer to put in the second one, this. The most effective tension, any more tension and it could actually pop off. So this is how I keep it spring-loaded. So without this, the trigger would move backwards and, and it would stay there, which would be quite dumb. Now what I have here is a standard Lego piece, two, uh, two dots by four dots, and I'm just gonna compare it with the size of my bullet here. So as you can see, the bullet is slightly smaller than two dots of a Lego piece. Now, this means that if I were to build a barrel or a guideway for the bullet, which would have to be either one dot size or two dot size uh, width, sorry, that means that this bullet will not fit nicely inside. So that will make it clunk around while it's on its flight uh, out of the barrel. So that would result in inaccuracy. So the way that I overcame this was actually to use a track system. So as you can see on the bottom part, there are there's two sets of tracks, which are one dot, one Lego dot apart, and it's the same for the top part. So this is the piece that goes on top, which I took out. So the bullet actually fits right nicely in here like that, just between the two tracks. And when this top piece is put on, it actually forms just nicely four points of contact with the bullet. And this is quite tight um, compared to if there were no tracks. So. This actually allows accuracy for uh, shots up to about, I think, uh, three meters, I would say. And mainly it ensures that a bullet travels straight and not to the left or to the right. Sorry, to the left or to the right. And um, so just now you saw the three shot, three hit video. And this is the mechanism which allowed it to be that accurate. Now of course this is not just any crossbow, this is a crossbow that stores bullets within itself. And what actually allows that is this blue part over here. This is something like a magazine, though it's not removable, but it stores up to three bullets. And the reason uh, it only stores three bullets is because uh, I tried five before, which means that the magazine is much longer. And since it's elastic band uh, operated, which means that it, it moves it's held up by an, by an elastic band here, is that when there's five bullets, the tension at that part will be too high. So I ended up with squashed bullets and stuff. So it works best with three bullets, and I will show you how it works right here. So this green part here, which is something like a T-shape, this is actually something like a bolt. Now this holds the bullet in when I don't want it to be coming out. So if I were to pull it back, I'm gonna load in a bullet here. So as you can see, the, the bolt actually holds the bullet inside. So you can see the bullet, the white thing over there. And it, bullets have to be loaded in from the top. So I'll load in three. So as you can see, the bullets are inside right now being held in by the bolt. If I were to pull the bolt back, the bullets would just jump out like that. So that's how the mechanism works. And this is actually quite important for uh, a bolt action crossbow to, to function, which is how you see me. Um, after every shot, I just cock it once, just pull back the elastic band, and the next bullet is loaded. Now I've actually put the top bar, I've put the top bar of the crossbow back on, so you can see the mechanism which allows me to, to reload the crossbow. So 
is actually this red piece over here. Well, not just the red piece, the red piece is part of it. So I will unlock it for you to see. And it's actually just a swiveling cover, something like that. And when this is open, it actually exposes. I'm not sure if you can see it. I'll turn on the light so you can see. Ah, there. So as you can see, that blue part was what you saw just now, which is the mechanism inside. So this being the bolt, which can be moved back and forth. Now, when there's no bullet inside, the the magazine assembly actually moves up to lock the bolt backwards like that, much like uh, an M16 or something. So bullets are loaded in from the top. So the moment I put a bullet in, the bolt actually moves forward to lock the lock lock the bullet inside. So this is much like a shotgun where bullets are loaded in one by one. So once I'm done, I just close it and it's ready to fire. Now the main perk about my crossbow is, in, in comparison to even some commercial crossbows, is that commercial crossbows require two actions. One is the, one is the cocking of the bow itself, which is charging it uh, to fire, and then secondly is to insert the bow itself. Now mine does both in one swift action, so as I can show you right now, I'm going to pull back the, the, the bow string, so I'm adding energy and I'm charging the system, but when I pull back all the way, I actually hook onto this green part and pulling back the green part releases the bow. So when I move this forward, it's cocked and ready to fire. Now the difference, another difference between my crossbow and many other crossbows I see is that, well, first of all, the bullet is very small, but that's, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the fact that on most crossbows, the stopper is actually stopping the bowstring directly, but that's not the case in my crossbow because my crossbow requires the stopper to actually stop the bullet. So as you can as, as you can probably surmise right now, by pulling back the bowstring, and once I release the bullet out from the magazine, the bowstring actually pushes the bolt forward. The bullet, sorry, not the bolt. The bullet forward. And the bullet actually ends up here, as you can see. I could move a bit closer. It will end up here with the bowstring behind. So the bowstring is pushing on the bullet, the bullet is pushing on the stopper. So once I release the stopper, the whole thing moves forward. Now one last feature I'm going to show you about my crossbow is that my crossbow is actually a bullpup design. Now what this means is that the handle of the crossbow or the weapon is in front of the magazine. So this is different from an M16 where the magazine is in front of the handle. And much similar to uh, a Steyr or, or a SAR21 or a Farmers from, from France. So, this allows for more stability when I'm holding it. So as you can see, I'm holding it with one hand right now. And it's very sturdy. Uh, I don't have to worry about the handle breaking, well, it's Lego. So any excessive weight will break the handle, but no, not in this case. In this case, in this case it's, very, it's very stable. So if you want to show off by doing one hand shooting, it's very good for that. And just to show you how balanced it is, I'm actually going to balance it on the table right here in front of me. On the handle. And you can see it actually balances perfectly. Now this is something I wanted to achieve, but I didn't know whether I really would or not. So it was pretty much trial and error of balancing out the front and the back. So this allows, this is really quite a surprise to me that actually worked out. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you have been inspired, hopefully, by seeing uh, how I made this. I certainly had a lot of fun making it, lots of trial and error, lots of challenges also, um, but I'm still working on it, it's not perfect, and that's the truth about any LEGO creation. So, if this has inspired you, I'd love to see you try and make a LEGO crossbow. Maybe if you could make an automatic LEGO crossbow or semi-automatic LEGO crossbow, that would be even cool as well. So, until next time, as our favourite Russian on YouTube always says, have a nice day.